Hello everyone, Darren here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now, in the last episode, we switched from our biomass burners to the superior automated coal generators with quite an ambitious build for just four hours in the game. I think I can admit I may have overestimated just how much needed to be done, especially considering we had a lot of grunt work to do back at the base in the first half of that episode. So, while I did manage to eventually power on the factory and it is working, it's not up to its full throughput yet. Not even close. It doesn't even have walls or any customization, and there's a few things that need to be clarified so everyone can follow along a little bit more easily. So today, we're going to be going over this factory again, albeit much more quickly, powered up to its full potential for where we are in our progression right now, and then just generally clean it up so it doesn't look so damn ugly. Then we'll have the power, literally, to build pretty much any factory we desire for many hours to come. But first, there's a rather uncomfortable matter. I must attend to. You just keep looking at what you did. You did a great job. Okay, you did great. Fix it is proud of you. I'm so sorry. Don't make this any worse than it has to be. This is on you. I didn't want this. God damn it. Stop making it so difficult. Jesus. Oh god. It's like he's trying to wave at me. One last time. And there goes the coffee cup. And it's back. What the hell? Okay. Alright, so. Now that that uncomfortable situation has been dealt with, I thought we should explain the build once more just to address some of the comments and concerns we had in the previous episode. And also just to bring everyone up onto the same page in case it's your first time joining. So effectively, what we've got in front of us are 18 coal generators. This floor is going to be split into four groups of 45. The generator is going to be placed onto the orange tiles you see in front of us. For simplicity's sake, I've removed all the other generators just so we can see the bare minimum that we can actually supply right now in terms of just two groups. We'll build an additional two groups in the future. So why four groups? Well, it's because we have four coal deposits here, each with their own miner. Currently, our technological progress has allowed us to transport up to 120 resources per minute on our Mark II belts. Our miners are, by default, getting 60 coal ore per minute out of each resource deposit. But we can overclock it with a couple of power shards to 200%, giving us 120 resources per minute to travel along the belt. We're keeping the belt separate so that then we can overclock each machine bringing in 120 four times over into each of the four respective groups. One group is done right now, which is why you can see nine of the generators currently firing and giving us power. There's nine that are in place that have not received their ore yet, and then there's two other groups in the distance that have not even been built yet, but we'll do that. So, I've got a lot of questions about why we're doing it this kind of way. Why has it been broken into four groups? Well, basically, each miner in the future will be capable of doing 600 ore per minute, and that's too much for multiple belts to handle. So they need to be on separate belts. So we keep them isolated to their own four separate groups. That's the reason for that. Why are we underclocking the generators to 88%? Well, it's for simplicity's sake when it comes to the water extractors. So by default, a water extractor makes 120 water per minute. The pipe can basically handle 600 when we get Mark II pipes. Currently, we can only handle 300 per minute. But let's just say 600 per minute is what we'll have eventually. 600 divided by 120 means five water extractors per pipe, so that's totally fine. Now, if we had, let's say, not underclocked our generators, they would consume 45 water per minute. So 45 in from one pipe would mean that we can supply 13 0.33 recurring generators from just one pipe. Yeah? Bit of an awkward number. I thought as this is a beginner series, at least here at the beginning, as we bring people along with us and advance into the game, it'd be easier to work with numbers that aren't so difficult. Especially in terms of getting the layout right. Because 13.33, that's awkward. You need 14 generators, you have to underclock one, and then the pipes have to be... The layout of the actual build then has to change. It just gets a little bit messy. So what I decided to do was underclock the generators so they only consume 40 water. And that means we just need 15 generators. So that's why we have lines and groups of 15. So what we're going to do over on the right hand side of the screen, as you can see, we are going to be building the rest of the coal generators. Ow. 
And we're just going to get to work on that immediately so you can get the spacing. As you can see, we've laid out the orange tiles to show you where all the generators are going to go in the future. So let's just hop up here and get started on the next two groups. And we can do it really quickly now, I think, because we know our spacing. So we'll go into power, grab a coal generator, rotate it around. The input's facing into one of the lanes here that's available for us to kind of walk down. We'll bring this all the way towards us. We'll lock it in place. We need it to be just before the vent. Not on the vent, but before the vent. And the inputs need to be on the vent. Okay, so this bit before the vent, this bit on the vent. And then we'll put that down. We'll get this one in the same place. We know that it's lined up when we get our green line. And we can see that that looks good. Inputs on the vent. Next thing basically is then rotating this around. Locking it into place, and we can see that the seams, the back of the generators, actually kind of join. If we move it, you can see they're separated. Now they're joined. That's where we want it to be. Another way of checking is just to see, are you on the vent with your inputs? Yes, we are. We rotate around again. Lock it in place and see, are we good? We are good. All right, that one's that done. All right, bring that together. That should be that. And then this is the final one. It's as easy as that. I think we're good, right? Good. So now all the generators are in their correct lines, right? So the gap between the edges is three. So we have a walkway of three all the way around. And it is correct. Some people are wondering if this is meant to be this way. It is. We can kind of build around that, but this is the height that you need to be at in case you're just wondering. Um... If, so in the previous episode, I actually made a mistake and I was building a little bit lower. So I've actually now increased the height of my floor. It, you don't have to do that. And you can even argue that maybe it'd be better if you didn't. I don't know. It's fine. I just thought it'd be better to do that. So I tried to raise it based on what I was speaking about in the previous episode. Because I did, instead of putting four wall height down, I put three wall height. It won't change anything in terms of logistics down below. So don't freak out if you've done it. It's purely a kind of a cosmetic thing. So it's not too big of a deal. Now all we have to do is grab our generator and put down three in a row. Like so. I'll just do this for every single line, and then we just have to put down the floor holes and the pipes in front, which we'll talk about in just one second. Alright, super easy. Just holding control and rotating around means it's just going to snap in where it needs to. Excellent. It's also worth mentioning, because we're underclocking these to 88%, instead of taking, I think it's 15 coal per minute, they're only taking 13.2. So 13.2 times 9, that's 118.8. So we're actually being slightly inefficient because our conveyor belts are taking 120. So we're going to be left over with 1.2 coal. Um, we'll fix that at the very, very end. But for now, that's just totally fine, obviously. It's such a small amount. It doesn't really make a difference. Uh, if you wanted to balance it, you know, if you want to play around yourself, you could just clock the last machine to, to count for the amount that you'll need. Uh, you don't actually see the amount until coal actually starts getting fed in. All right, so next thing anyway, now that the generators are all in position, we're just going to put down the pipeline floor holes, which are actually having a bit of a bug in the game at the moment. So if a pipeline floor hole is placed down and a pipe is connected to it, and then you put a pump on it, it breaks the floor hole where it won't work anymore. So you need the pump to be down first, then build the pipeline floor hole. Now, it doesn't matter here. It's only if the segment attached directly to the bottom is having that pump issue. If it's a few segments over, that's okay. It's fine. So these ones won't have that problem. But the ones downstairs do have that problem and did have that problem. And I uh, failed to mention it to you. But a few people pointed out in the comments that they were having issues with their pipeline floor holes. I thought it'd be good to kind of address that and show the fix for it and why it happens. All right, I guess that's pretty much it. That's all of our floor holes in position for the pipelines. Now we need to do the same thing for the actual conveyor lifts, for the logistics of coal traveling up. So I'll just go around and do this very quickly, and then we'll resume. All right, now that all the floor holes are in position, we're just going to hook them up. So using the noodle build mode for pipes, just sink them straight down into it. I'm just going to go ahead and do all of these as well. All right, and of course, you'll have to do the same for the actual conveyor lifts. All right, so all the lifts and the pipes are now in place. So what we have to do now is underclock every machine to 88%. A little bit tedious, admittedly. When I did want people to do that, I assumed we could copy and paste the settings, but for some reason, 
That is just a little bit bugged at the moment. You can normally do it with pretty much every machine, and you can do it with fuel generators, so coal generators just have that issue. Now, a kind of a quicker way of doing it, just slightly, that might help you a bit, is you can run straight along here. So you could just kind of run, click down the bottom, do it, click down the bottom, do it, and just keep doing that over. So I'm just going to do that for every machine now. All right, now that they've all been assigned their 88%, we need to actually build the power poles. So I didn't actually show this before, but I tend to put it between the machines in the little seam. Right between the cracks. And effectively, you just link a cable to two of them, and then link this one to its little sister, and then link these two together, and then you just keep doing that. So that'll be the idea going forward, but obviously we're only building just a small amount of generators for now. But that's the idea, just to continue it along all the way the length of the whole building. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. That's an additional 18 coal generators now in position with their floor holes all hooked up, the power poles are connected, and they've been underclocked to 88%. Underclocking them to 88% means we get 66 megawatts of power out of them, and currently we have 36 generators in place. So 36 times 66 megawatts means we're aiming for 2,376 megawatts of power once this place turns on fully. So currently we are producing 594. We can see that one quarter of our generators are burning. So 594 times four, because we're going to have four groups, is 2376, so it's correct. And we can see we have a nice stable network right now. Now the capacity is actually higher, and that's because we have the biomass burners still hooked up to the network, ready to turn on should the demand reach a point where they have to. So that's what the capacity means. But the production rate means that we're currently burning that much coal, and it's giving us that much power. All right, so with all that in position, now we're going to travel downstairs. Let's see if I can just go one floor down. Now, it's quite dark in this floor, and it's quite foggy as well. There's not much we can do. We're in Blue Crater, it's just naturally foggy sort of biome. What you could do is open up the console by pressing the tilde key or the grave key, which is the key next to the number 1. If you type r.fog, and then type 0, so r.fog space 0, so that's disable fog, gets rid of all the fog. But it doesn't really brighten anything up. I'm just doing this to show you, because some people did suggest that I try this doesn't really brighten anything up. We're playing with global illumination turned on, so that's one of the reasons that it's just going to be dark until we get lights, which is actually the reason that I wanted this room to be four wall heights up. Because if you remember, I made a mistake in the last episode where I only built it three wall heights, and I put the ceiling here. That was just a mistake on my part. It doesn't really matter if you do that or not. It was just so that eventually we could also get some lights in here and brighten the place up. So I wouldn't worry about it too much if you did it or not. It doesn't really affect anything upstairs. There's a little bit of terrain creeping through the foundations upstairs, but don't worry about it. We can kind of work around that. It's fine. All right, so I'm going to turn the fog back on because I think it just, it actually, if anything, brightens the place up. And that's just because of the bounce lighting, the bounce lighting that's happening thanks to global illumination. So we've got a problem here. We've painted out where all the generators are going to go, and this is something I actually asked you guys about on YouTube in a poll. I know not everybody sees everything, but I put it up as soon as I realized that we've got a, a pretty grave error here. So if we head over to this location, this is our central pumping area, and we can just open up the floor here. We know that we made a 3x3, three three, so it's like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. 3x3 three three foundation area, and on each square, in each corner, is going to be where all the pumps go. Right, so each one has three respective pumps for the three rows of 15 generators for one category of 45 generators in total. But unfortunately, I've realized that I've positioned these wrong. They need to be placed here. So you can see that the orange is where our coal generators end. So if this line has to naturally travel all the way out here to feed all the generators above me, our pipes are going to start crisscrossing a little bit. Now, you could do that. It doesn't affect the logic of the game or anything like that. There's no height problem in terms of whatever. The pumps will take care of it no matter what. So there's actually no real massive drawback. But I put up a poll asking, should I show people how to work around it? Or should I tell people and just redo it? Now, the solution to fixing this means that we have to move everything down four foundations in total. But where that gets problematic is with the water extractors. The water extractors are a kind of an uneven size. They don't fit into foundations very nicely. So what it means is we actually have to remove them all, <laughs> remove the walkways, push everything up four foundations, and then relay 
the water extractors, if that kind of makes sense. So effectively, what I will be doing is going like this. One, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to look at this. So we want our walkway here. So it's going to be one, two, three, and four. So here is where the walkways are going to go out, like so. And then the water extractors are going to be placed in the same distance away, which I think is two tiles over. Yeah, so you count this one because we're talking from the walkway, right? So one, two, and then it just creeps over the edge. Another way to think about it is you can work from the end, right? So the end foundations are staying in position. And we've got one, two, three, four, and that's where we just creep over, right? That was the rule of how to build this place. Go four foundations over, and then just creep your sort of uh, metal walkways over the line a little bit. And that's basically how you get what we need. So I'll just get rid of this, actually, so we can see a bit more clearly. So one, two, three, and four. And then this just comes pretty much just over the vent line. It's so hard to see, man, but it is there. It's just over the vent line. So what you'll need to do is make this eight. So one, two, three, four. And then it's got to be five, six, seven, and eight. So we'll need a water extractor to come just over this vent line here. And that's why it's not as easy as just chopping away one and putting one on the end. Unfortunately, the whole line has to be removed and pushed up. Now, to avoid my power tripping, because we're removing the kind of source of the power, the biomass burners will kick in and buy me some time, but I'll probably just do one row at a time, hooking them back up where they need to go. It also means that, unfortunately... So, the good, the good news is that these lanes are staying in place, that the alignment of these stay in place, basically. They just need to be moved up for. So, if you can always leave one in position, you can still realign it much quicker than you'd otherwise have to. The pumps need to just be removed, and the pipes up here need to be removed, and it just needs to be moved forward to this central area here. So, this will be the 3x3. Three three. So, the diagrams will be on screen. I'll take a moment to kind of show them on screen, show what I'm talking about. But effectively, everything's just moving over by four. And you don't have to do it. I think it's better that I do do it. I think it's better that you do it as well before we build out the rest of the factory. Because it'll just make things look more symmetrical and actually be easier to build if you could just put up the time at the front. But I would say if you've already gone ahead and done a lot, and you did more than it was done in that original episode... Just leave it. If it works, it works. The groups and the logic stays the same. It's just about having a bit of a cleaner pipeline, effectively. So I wouldn't worry too much, and I'm so sorry that this happened. I don't know how I misaligned it. It's so crazy, because in Photoshop, I have the grids overlaid on top of each other, and for some reason, I just didn't really clock the fact that the pipes are going to get in the way of each other, really. Uh, but like I said, you can draw pipes through each other, and logically, it works just fine, but it will look a little bit messy. All right, so... What I have to do now is get to work on this by shifting these water extractors up, and then I'm going to resume time and resume recording and show you building out the extra ones, uh, just like we did before. So I'm just going to shift these ones, and then we'll continue on building, and hopefully that kind of makes sense anyway when we get to it. All right, everybody, I've actually got a way that I can make this a little bit more approachable and not so anxiety-inducing to have to move everything over four foundations. So what you see in front of me is the original pipes, pumps, and water extractors not moved, not touched, just the walkways have changed a little bit, and we're going to leave that there. It serves two purposes. One, it keeps power going, so when we add other water extractors, everything just kind of powers on naturally and should be fine. And two, it serves as a great reference point for us to look back on and see where we've moved. So like I said, we're just moving everything four foundations over in one direction. So this is the old walkway that we had before. And this is the old kind of pumping floor, right? We had the three by three little foundations we could stand on and the walkway connected straight over. Now, we've shifted that one, two, three, and four foundations over to create this new platform here. Now, unfortunately for me, my recording software died and it didn't save what I talked through. So I actually talked through building a good chunk of this stuff out. In fact, I even did this area, but I decided just to delete all this, start the recording again, and just show you how to align correctly on the new foundations, moving everything four foundations over, okay? So if you're wondering why that's done, it's because it's a failed recording, basically, and we'll leave that where it is now. That's all done. But I wanted to show it one more time, so deleted everything out of the way. Really is a cursed episode today. <laughs> cursed factory. But it should be good. All right, so we're four foundations over. The new center point is now aligned with the tower, and we're between 
the coal generators that are a couple floors above us. And we have our floor holes that will show us where things will need to go, basically. So what we're going to do to start us off is we're just going to... We're aligned with the height of the walkways. We're going to go one layer over that, right? So foundation one, just in the four corners. So already I've done those two, of course. And we're really going to be leaving this side. So we're just going to focus on this one. Now we'll grab our floor holes and put them in the four corners. Well, really just the three corners. The three outer corners facing towards the water. That's where they got to go. And basically, these can aim straight up now. So you'll just have to map that to the ceiling in the same position. So the three corners, basically, yeah? Easy enough. So we'll plonk them all in together. The next thing, then, is aligning our actual water foundations. Or, sorry, our water extractors on their foundations. So, effectively, this has to be two foundations out from the walkway, right? So, the walkway starts here. So, we have to go one and two. So, you could also think of it as in it has to be one foundation out from where we just did those pipes. So, one, and we're coming over here. So, the water extractor has to go down, but it has to be aligned in the center. So, we actually push it more to the right, bring it all the way forward so that the ladder comes over the vent line. And, obviously, because I've done a row now, Give me a guideline to let me know that that's accurate. So we can see here, the ladder is just over the vent line. Yeah, it's over the black seam between the two foundations. It's over the vent line. And the sort of walkway that's on the edge of the water extractor is also creeping over the vent line as well. And that's how we know we're aligned. So that leaves us with a space of one, two foundations before we get to the walkway. Yeah, that's the idea there. So we're creeping over the foundation just slightly. But that's how you align it. Now, obviously, we only need one water extractor doing 120 water because it's the most we can really use at the moment. But I'm just going to forward plan and build all five that we'll eventually need. And we'll give them their pipes in just a moment. But we're just going to align the other ones. And then we'll show you how to get all the pipes rearranged and back to where they need to go. So we're basically following the steps we did before. There we go. Let's just make sure. So we can see again the... Oh, no. There we go. Yeah, I was thinking I had a little problem there. We're still aligned. So, yeah, the ladder needs to be on the vent line, and we're aligned with the one behind it, so that's all good. So just another five in a row down here. All right, simple as that. And then we just need to do the same thing on this side. So we'll just find the snap point. There it is. Push it back so that the ladder is in line with the vent. And there we are. Alright, and then we just put those down five more times. Now, the interesting thing is we can actually see the difference of where the old group was compared to this new group. So, it used to be one, two, three, and four foundations. And that's where it would start, right? It would start to creep over that fourth foundation. But now it's five, six, seven, eight, and it starts to creep over. So it's just a solid four foundations further along this way. And that's why it would have been nice to just chop away one and add one to the end. But unfortunately, it's not that easy. As you can see, they're not really aligned with each other. So you'd almost have to get rid of two and add one, and then it just won't work. Ultimately, you have to delete the line and rebuild it four foundations over from where it started. All right, so that's all kind of set and done. Now we'll get these pipes to come over and join friends with the floor holes over here. So we'll just get rid of this bit, and we're going to build out a two foundation on the ground, leading it all the way over to here, and bring that all the way down 10 meters, and 10 meters, or 10 foundations, I should say. And the same down here. All right, so for time's sake, I'll do the rest. But, I mean, I'll do the rest of these machines. We'll just hook up the first one, right? Because everything else is obviously just in a row. You just need to build these. I don't know why we're getting some weird snap points over there. I guess it's to the pumps or something for some reason. Yeah, so you just build these in a line and just connect them all up, obviously. So we'll just do these first three extractors. They're the only ones that can be used now anyway. So... We have our floor holes there. We're just going to align a pipeline support here and a pipeline support there and another one here. Go to horizontal to vertical. Just feed them up to their friends. 
Auto 2D, bring this guy into that one. Connect him to him. And then obviously this is just going to continue. Whoops. This is just going to continue down in future, but we'll just do these first two, seeing as that's ready. Alright, so that's that. Now we need to hook up these two ones. So this is a really easy one, actually. So the pipeline cross is there. You don't want to creep over the foundation line, right? So that's over the foundation. We don't want that. We want it to come in by one. So hook those up together. And then drag out the pipe. And we just bring it to the seam of the foundation. And we just send that right in. That creates a nice right angle for us. Alright, we'll do the same over here. It's slightly different. But basically the same. Drag this with us. So we're trying to aim for over there. So we move it back too. Okay. And that's really it. That's really all there is to it. That's basically it. We'll have to do the pumps in a moment. The other thing would be doing the power poles. So the way I'm doing it is I just drag out a power line. And then I put it on a like the um, walkway seam. And I just do that every time we're in line with the machines. You don't always get a green line, but if you do, that's great. <laughs> and I'm basically leaving these ones just not hooked up. So when I come back to this factory and want to upgrade it, all I have to do is drag a cable and connect it. That's it. So all we need now is the front two ones. Just those two. And then this one as well, of course. So this one's actually going to power on. So that's going to start sending its liquid over to this pipe. Now we have to put our pumps on. That'll be the next thing to do. Uh, the other thing, I'm just going to also drag this together. This will actually power on all of the water extractors now. All the first row. Oh, I haven't done these ones yet, actually. Just continue down here and make sure that we get the power poles in the right place. We are whirring, powering on. So now we got to bring the liquid upstairs, right, with pumps. So very similarly to how we did before, we can chop this away now. These platform, well, I guess I'll leave that for future. These ones aren't needed anymore. And now we can come out with some walkway. And the corner here. All right, so that's what we're, in, we're we're left with, right? We have this little walkway with the floor holes protruding quite a bit, and then we go all the way up. So we need to add two pumps to it. So we go into logistics, pump, make sure it's facing the right way. We've learned that lesson. And we could probably start, there's actually like these little seams on the pipe, you see them? There's a little seam there. Probably just want to start two seam on the second seam. Roughly around there is good. If you hold control, it should snap into itself then. Although it doesn't always work, like this one won't do it now. But at least we know that we're on that second scene. So we can just do that. And then it wants to go all the way to the top. I'm just going to go slightly below the top. Just go slightly below it. Because there's a bug in the game with the floor holes. So we'll just go slightly below and that will actually kind of help us. If we have to reattach them. Because if it's too high up... Like that one's actually too high up. If it's too high up, it has a little problem kind of connecting. So just go right below where it needs to be. Alright, there we go. And then lastly, we just need to hook them all up. So each one's going to need its own pole. And uh, in future, we'll have nicer looking poles. We'll have the just the power connectors that attach to walls. So for now, we'll just have to like connect them like this, I guess. So one pipe for two, the central pipe connects to both, and then this one can connect out to the center. Oh, the center's already maxed out. So I guess we'll just break a pipe somewhere here in the center. Sorry, a pipe? Uh, connection. And there we go. They all have what they need. So we should start seeing them pumping already. Although for some reason they're not. I don't know why. Ah, there we go. Just takes a minute. 
and they'll start going up. Now, some of these might be blocked. I'll check upstairs in just a moment, but right now I'm just going to do the same to the other two sections that we have to deal with. All right, everybody, that's every single pump and pipe now hooked up. So we're looking good. I still haven't, you know, moved the original grouping, so that's going to just stay there for a little while. We're going to go upstairs now and start working on the actual pipe logistics. So we have done water extractors now. It's quite a long time, but that's coal generators and water extractors done. Now we're on to the pipe management just upstairs. Now I've been saying we're going to go upstairs for quite a while, but we haven't actually built the stairs yet. So in the center of the tower, now that we're actually aligned with the center, I felt like it made sense to move the door more centrally. But in order to line up with the railing, it's probably best that it still is you know, a door that's off to one side. So whatever, we're on the right side now coming in. We have one little stairs that brings us down and leads outside. So as we come up and around now, what we'll just do is basically just follow this pattern. So two, like so. And then we just copy the ground. And then we just keep doing this. Just keep going around and around. All right, just like that, we have our staircase that leads all the way up to the coal generator floor. And it's just made by sets of two stairs and then a break and then two stairs and then a break. And then it's actually one stairs here just for the logistics floor. So that's a little bit of an offset. But then it's two again, two again, two again. And then we're down to the floor where our basement floor, our water extractor floor. And we have our silhouette of the pumps in the distance. All right, so now we can get up and, up and down stairs quite quickly just to get up to the logistics floor. And obviously in the future, I like to reserve this central band here for possibly a hypertube. And you can put two or three into it and get off at different floors then. All right, so here we are, the pipe logistics floor. So currently we are serving nine generators over there, but we know that we've moved everything four foundations over to make way for the coal generators that are going to be on the floor above. So this is our new area for where water is trying to come up. So we effectively just have to mirror what this is doing, but just push it back a bit. So see this setup here? We need the exact same thing. So we're just gonna go like this, horizontal to vertical, rotate it so it's facing out. And just make sure it's like that, yep. And then just put it there. And then this line can actually just continue all the way down. And like I said, we're actually mirroring it. So we'll just put the brakes at the same area. And we'll put a break maybe somewhere here. And then this can just continue all the way past. Doesn't matter that we used horizontal to vertical. The pipe is straight, so that's all that matters. And as you can see, we are aligned with the floor holes above. So that's all that matters there. All right, we're just going to do this again. But for this side... So again, we're kind of copying what this one's doing. So it's going way off to the left and then aiming down. Uh, and if we wanted to even look at where it's doing it... One is turning on the seam, and one is turning just a bit further in. Similar to how we did it downstairs, so kind of works out. All right, so this the far in one was on the seam. So this is the line. We can easily see it now. Bring this all the way, and it's got to come to here, I think, right? I'll just change that to auto. Oh, no, it actually has to be horizontal to vertical, yeah. Is that correct, though? Yep. Now we can do auto 2D. And we can just go all the way down, but we'll just match this so that we hit the same seam points. It's going to be a little off there, actually, if I did it that way. So we want to be here. There we go. All right, we just bring this down. So the next one is here. And the next one is here. And then this can just come all the way to the edge. All right, and hopefully we have a nice straight pipe that's right underneath the floor holes that we're going to be going up to. And I make no noise on this pipe, it seems. It's kind of interesting. I feel like that's that's new. <laughs> All right. So again, pipe. Horizontal to vertical. This one's going to come out a little further to about there. I think that's it. And then auto 2D. So just to make this a little easier on myself, I'll just put down the floor, um, the supports first. All right, now they just connect in much nicer.
All right, and that leaves us with with nice right angles and straight pipes leading all the way towards the floor holes, and they're traveling right underneath. So I'm just going to do this now for the other sections. It's just going to be a complete mirror copy, so we'll just get the ball rolling with this one, just so you can see. So this one here, again, horizontal to vertical, we're going to be bringing it this way, but we're going to bring it towards us this time. See any difference? Uh, then this one would be going as far out as that. And we'll just lock that in place just to check. Yep. Just that. And then this one will be coming all the way out to the scene point. And that's going to be traveling down. And we'll just look at how many how many foundations it was to put in the foundation. God, I keep calling them foundations. We'll look at how many foundation seams it is in to count it, just to be symmetrical and have it look the same. Oh my god, I've done something hor horrific. That pipe um, grew from the bottom for some reason, not from the top. Never seen that before. Is that okay? Yeah, there we go. That's better. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm just going to finish these off then, and then we can show it. All right, everybody, so this is what you should be left with. It's 12 pipes in total, all coming up from their respective floor holes and traveling down their respective lanes to get to their various generators. Now, I've actually gone ahead and done it already for the ones that we haven't hooked up yet. So, of course, the original powered-on water extractors and coal is over there, and that's all hooked up and working. And you can see we've just moved four foundations over, basically, and we have everything ready to go here. So once I'm ready, we'll just connect this pipe straight in along the same line. And there shouldn't really be any difference. And that's why I was saying it should make it a little bit easier to do it. And we'll just leave this waiting in position for us to get ready to do that. So again, we'll just connect that straight up in there, and we'll connect this straight up into that one. Um, but we're not going to chop away yet. You know, we want to keep the power rolling until we get the others up and running. At least very much the water extractors feeding the coal generators and the miners as well being powered on so that they get their coal. So we'll leave all that still in place until the very last minute and then we'll sever the connections and re-hook re them up and rebuild the water extractors. Hopefully everything will go smooth. All right, so our pipes are now in place. They're nice and symmetrical and out of the way of everything. That's the kind of benefit for doing it correctly, I guess. And uh, now all we have to do is hook up pipes vertically. So we need just to feed three coal generators. Now, like I said, I'm going to do it where I do feed them all. But just for now, we'll just hook up the ones that are necessary. So we can actually see right along the seam here is where we need to put down our support. Just do something like that. And then we hold control, rotate around. And it's as easy as that. Then we can just go straight up. Now we can get rid of the bits we no longer need. Alright, so we're left with a pipe that just kind of ends like that. It's actually a support really close to it. I'll just leave that. It's fine. But in future, I'll probably remove it when we grow and build out further. Alright, so that's basically all of the pipes now hooked up for all of their respective categories. Of course, we're only feeding the first three generators in each row. I will, of course, go ahead and do all of the generators by the end of the episode, but just for now, to keep the ball rolling, and also just to show you what the minimum amount viable right now is for 120 coal per minute on traveling on belts, it's going to be three generators in each row, so three and then three, and so on and so forth. So we've done that now in every category, so it's 36 generators all hooked up with their pipes, all going up to the top floor. Now, we've toggled that off the list. We're going to do belt logistics. So very simply, again, we just get our splitter. Now, a nice little kind of way to know that you're lined up is just to have it in front of one of the pipes here if you can't necessarily just look up. Obviously, you can just do this now as well. So what we're going to do is rotate it around so their inputs are coming from the far end over that way, where the coal is coming from. And then we just need to have it where it's just creeping over the line, just there. So it's going to be one, two, and three. And then we just do that, again, similar to the pipes, three times over and connect all these up. Mark one belts are totally fine. Now, we can get our conveyor lifts and snap them in. Now, you'll actually see, I haven't actually hooked up the upstairs part of this yet, so I'll have to reverse the direction, because it wouldn't have actually had that right. So that's a small little thing that can trip you up. It's because upstairs, this isn't attached to anything yet. I forgot to put on the lifts just for the set of generators that's right above me. I've done them for all the others, but I just thought I should point that out in case people ever have that issue. So you just press R to reverse the direction. But if the floor holes were connected, it would have known it's an input, so it couldn't have, it wouldn't have allowed me to reverse it, if that makes sense. All right, so let's just do this one more time, and then we'll be done with it. So again, we just look at the pipe that we want to kind of clear, lock it in place, and we just wanted to come over. No, that was right. Yep. 
then we can just use the guiding lines to show us where things are going. All right, and then just the lifts that have to slot in. Okay, it's as easy as that. So we'll have to duplicate this area over here and start feeding the subsequent uh, splitters. So actually, I'll just make this case, th do these ones over here, and then we'll be done. All right, that's the final splitters now in position for at least this row of generators. I also noticed that the water is flowing because I heard it when I was connecting them together. So water is actually already flowing on this, and this is using one of our brand new pumps. But I noticed that the other pipes aren't, so it sounds like we have our bug to do with floor holes because none of the other ones are. This one's, if anything, the bug because it works uh, for some reason, even though they're all built at the exact in the exact same order and fashion. So effectively what this bug is, it's if you put down a floor hole first, connect a pipe to it, and then put a pump on it, the segment, the floor hole breaks, I guess. But not the other ones. The other floor holes are fine. The ones that actually connect to the generators, it's just the one that's directly after the pump. So what you have to do, I think, is just literally clear... Clear them and rebuild them. So we'll just put this back on it. It's really tedious to have to do this, so I do apologize, but it didn't used to be this way. It's just like a new bug, I guess. So we'll just open this back up. So our floor holes are back in position, and... Sorry, pipeline no indicator. We'll just go with horizontal to vertical. Just connect those two, and this is why I told you to leave a little bit of a gap, just so that we can actually see, uh, connect the two pipes there properly. And, uh, yeah, then we just should be able to just connect this straight across. And we can hear the water moving, actually, so... Sounds good. All right, so that's that. You know, it's fixed. I'll just check that one to be sure. Yep. Okay, so I just have to do this now in other places where water hasn't made it. So these all have their pumps up and running, but none of them are getting water. So I'll just do this over and over again, basically. All right, so that's all of the splitters that are now in position and all of the lifts feeding up to their various generators at the far end of the factory and at the front. So now we're going to do the actual belt logistics and feed them the coal that they need to get started. So we've already done it for one section, and this isn't going to change. It looks great. It works well. We're going to copy it. So what we'll do is we'll just mirror this on this side of the floor. So until we get to the far end, things are just going to be basically the exact same as we did before. We can do it really quickly, though, because it's there in place for us to look at. So we just grab this. We send it straight in. So that's that done. That's as easy as that. Uh, the next one is going straight out with this. Well, actually, the best way to do it is to start with the lift. So we'll start with the lift here, rotate it around. And then we know that that lift is on the line. So if we do this... We can just get that together. And now our lifts are in position with each other. They don't have to be, but it's just kind of nice to. Bring the belt all the way along the bottom. That was in the center, so... Two. Nice, nice right angle that leads us in there. And then we bring this one out, travels along the seam. And that connects in. How easy was that? Actually, I think this is actually slightly off. Let's do that one again. Yeah, I thought I was in the middle before. Maybe I went a bit off. Yeah, better. All right, cool, there we go. So that's coal done for this section. But now we're going to do the far section. So the way we're going to do that is actually fairly simple. So we have this belt here that's serving nine generators over there. We have this belt here that's now serving these nine. So we still have the top two belts to serve the back nine, if that makes sense. And the ultimately, they'll be serving 45 each by the time this place is done, right? So let's get them to where they need to go. So what we're going to do is build a splitter here, but have the input on the far side. So the input coming in from here. We don't actually really need a splitter, but we'll just do it with one anyway. So we're going to grab the st stackable conveyor pole. Just stand on the far side here. And move this over to, to about there. This allows us to bring this in. We could do this at the exact same time over on this side, actually. It might make it a bit quicker. Because it's a mirror copy, so everything we do is applied twice, effectively. All right, so this then goes into there. All right, and that goes into there. So now we'll start with a stackable pole, which I don't have my hotbar. 
in line with this right on the seam of the foundation and bring it up to three to a height of three so this can now just go straight in just like that I'll do the same over on this side so in line with here this can climb up so I'm not actually using this as a splitter I'm just using it as a right hand turn but it sits on top of the one that's there and it just looks quite nice doing it this way I feel like so we'll leave it as is all right, so now we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and six, I think. Not that it really matters. We go up. All right, we'll count across. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so now we're just going to travel that belt in a dead straight line all the way across. Keeping it raised the whole way. It has to travel over these pipes, remember. So there we go. Now I'm just going to copy that on this side now as well. Alright, there we go. So we've now got two raised belts traveling all the way towards the center point here, right? So this is the 3x3 three by, three by three center point where all the pumps are and stuff comes up. So just to have a look down below. Right in line with it. This looks good. Now that we've moved things. Uh, so what we need to do is get this section over to these groups here and that section over to those groups. So let's do it. We'll open up our splitter and in the center of this foundation. God, I can't see. There we go. We're now center aligned. Stack up to three. And then this can just feed straight in. Its left output can go into there at a nice right angle. And then this one can go all the way down here. So ultimately, that's where we're going. And we're in the center of the foundation, so we know that we can come up to here. Let's go straight in. That should have us, have us be nice and straight. So then it's the front output that will go into this one. So very similar sort of system. One, two. Just make sure that that is straight. No, it's not straight at all. There we go. Oh, it's actually on the line. Okay, that's good to know. And in it goes, just like that. So there we go. We have our conveyor belt traveling into a splitter, and the splitter is splitting three ways into those three rows. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing over here. We'll just do it again. We do it nice and quick. So one, two, and three. Get rid of the bottom ones if you don't want them. Or leave them there if you don't like to see things suspended in the air. Is that right? Yes, it is. Let's get this front one travels along the seam. Now that we've learned that, we can apply it. Just make sure that that's okay. Uh, yep. Oh my god. Alright, there we go. So that's how we feed the back half. So unlike the front half, we're feeding them from the middle, I guess, right? So these are getting it from the end and it's gonna go all the way out to the edge. Whereas this one has been fed from this side and going all the way out to that edge. If it was a complete mirror copy, the belts would somehow loop around the back and come in this way, you know what I mean? So it's not a complete mirror for the belts, it's slightly different and we keep them nice and high to go over the pipes and also be out of the way of the floor holes that'll be used all the way along here, right? The floor holes, I should say, really here. So they're still out of the way. Now, we need to do a little upgrade. I don't know if I've got... I do. I've reinforced iron plates. These are going to be Mark II. So you don't have to make them Mark II at this point, but on before it enters into that splitter, it's got to be a Mark II belt. And those will be the ones we'd be upgrading in the future. So this is how we'll upgrade the factory when we revisit it. We'll just literally run along this belt, clicking, you know, Mark II or whatever. And the important thing to not forget as well is anywhere you can... Uh, you'd also want to do it for the elevators or the lifts. So just bring this, we'll follow this all the way back now. And then we'll go forward again with the other one. Yeah, so here, right? So this could, oh my god. This could kind of trip you up if you forgot about it. So this needs to be Mark 2. That needs to be Mark 2. And then up again. That needs to be Mark 2. We'll just keep going. Mark two. Mark two. Alright. 
All good. In fact, we could turn that on now. Oh, and I need to give it two power shards, actually. 120 per minute. I'll have to go get more power shards. I think I left some over in the container over there, or some slugs, actually. Just to power that one on as well, and this one. So I need four more in total. Um, but yeah, so we need to just upgrade this. Make sure it's Mark II. That's Mark II all the way. Good. So this will be the one then that needs to be upgraded. So that's Mark II, and then down below. So this is really what it'll be like when I revisit the factory. I'll just be like doing this. It's like, yep, yeah, Mark III, you know, or Mark IV, or whatever we end up getting. So nice and quick, super quick, in fact. All right, there we go. So that's Mark II all the way. So I'm just going to go fetch a couple of power shards. And that should be the last thing now to actually supply these guys with their coal and get the power ramping up massively. And then we can kind of check against our expectation for power and how much we end up getting. All right, great. Our other one's been spooling for a while. I've just gone out and got another power shard that I was missing one. I have to find a blue slug. Bonk. Love it. All right, so that's going to put a little extra stress on our network. Uh, we can kind of go upstairs really quickly and see which generators are firing, what we're currently getting for power, and what we expect to get. Oh, we did this actually at the beginning, didn't we? 2,300 or something, I think, is what we're expecting. And I just want to make sure that these are on. Are they? They are. They have water, actually, which is great. I'll just check one or two more. Yeah, and they're connected to power. Power looks like it is hooked up. These all have water. Excellent. Excellent. So they just don't have their coal yet, because that's just trickling on in now. Oh, I will actually have to upgrade one more belt, thinking about it. All right, cool. So they have their power because the lights are flicking, flickering red. Oh, actually, one of them is just powered on. Yes, there we go. All right, nice. So, yeah, we expect to see 36 times 66. 2376 is the power output we expect to see. Once the manifold line sort of stabilizes, it'll take a little while to get there. Uh, so we're just going to run downstairs really quickly and upgrade this belt. This is the last one that doesn't have Mark II. This one here. All right, there we have it. Our smokestacks are firing a little intermittently, admittedly. And that's because of the manifold system just slowly flooding the machines with the coal that they need. So effectively what's happening, if we have a look down below, we can see that the way the splitters work, we have our belt of 120 coal here traveling in. And then this splitter splits evenly, so it takes half of what's going on that belt. So it's trying to take 60, constantly feeding it up. And that means 60 is always coming in here. So this one's going to feed, like, fill up faster than the next one. The next one is only getting 60 on the belt. And then it's taking 30 and sending 30 up. And then it's taking uh, 15 and sending 15 up. And so on and so forth. So you have this sort of... You have this massive delay the further and further out on a manifold you go before those things get powered on. And that can be solved by just feeding things directly rather than feeding them in a line where splitters are grabbing from the belt one by one uh, so what ends up happening is it until this one reaches a hundred and it gets completely backed up this will get full and then the splitter won't be able to like feed it anymore and then it moves on to the next one but then this will inevitably consume one and then take one again and it'll still take a while so it's like a rolling start it can take quite a while to to flood them all. But as you can see, these ones are all flooded. They're all working just fine um, and haven't had any issues. I'm right at the edge of the distance I need to be, by the way, where smoke might actually disappear due to like level of detail being a bit too far. But yeah, so I expect to see it sputtering for a little while. We might have uh, some hitches somewhere. I'm not too sure. But in fact, these might be having a problem because for them to go off is really unusual. I didn't change anything with those. So there are initial starting ones. They actually have their coal, but not their water. This might have come at a perfect time because I'm going to be redoing these ones anyway, right? We're going to go downstairs now. Oh my god. <laughs> thought I was going to die. Yeah, we're going to go downstairs now and change these water extractors to be in line with all of the new ones that we've built. So I think, I think it's time to do that now. So I can easily just remove them all. We keep all the materials anyway. 
and then just place them back down here. So I'm going to get cracking at that while our manifold system feeds all of the other ones now. All right, that is all of the water extractors now in the correct position. So the last thing that I need to do for cosmetics in this place is removing all of the unnecessary foundations. The ones that I just put in position so that we could see where we were and make sure everything was aligned correctly, which I totally didn't make any mistakes on. Everything went very smoothly. All of the pumps are now in position as well. Pumping in sync, which is quite nice to see, although some of them do flicker from time to time, and that's because of that manifold system we talked about when a generator runs out of coal temporarily because another one is hogging it. The water needs doesn't need to flow, right? So the pump slows down, and then the pump comes back up. So if we were to check one of our consumption lines, we can see that it's flickering just a little bit. It's kind of waving up and down, the orange line. The sort of black line is the one that we want to really pay attention to. We're aiming for 2376. We actually hit it just along right there. Just for a moment, all the generators fired at the same time. So that's what we're waiting for it to stabilize. In the meantime, I'm going to start removing all these foundations now. I think everything is in the correct place, so we can finally do that. And then I'm actually going to repurpose those materials to be walls. By the way, a nice quality of life feature when you're removing things that might have other things obstructing it. If you press G, you'll add a certain material to your dismantle filter. So now if I hold control and I try to dismantle anything to do with foundations 2 meters, it won't let me delete anything else. It'll just be the foundations that get removed. Really nice. All right, so I'm just doing out some of the cosmetics for the building, some of the final finalizing touches that we can add. And one of the first things was to add in another tower here. So it matches the one on the opposite side. It's just down that way. The height of the walls are just going to come up to four wall heights. So that's going to be 16 meters in total. And inside, I don't have the corner pieces for a roof yet. So I'm just putting the roof tiles on here. And later, when we get the material for glass, I would probably change it to glass. I'm also going to put some windows in here, but I don't have them yet. So again, you could just leave it blank, let some light come through. Might look kind of nice. I'm just going to cover it for now, and then I'll work with it in the future. Um, I'm also removing the paint job now of the floor. Because I'm just going to paint out the rest of these machines. I know where they end, so... Just going to start getting rid of the, all those kind of temporary measures. Down on the water extracting floor, I've been removing a lot of the foundations as well, so that area is clearing up as well. So just kind of putting some of the finalizing touches on the place. Alright, looks like we have reached 2376. We have reached stability. 36 generators, all operating at 66 megawatts. I've now cleaned this entire area, so what I'm probably going to do next... I haven't really fully decided, and I don't want to spend too long on cosmetics for this place just because we haven't unlocked everything yet that would make it interesting. But we could use a concrete foundation down the middle of the walkways. And that could look quite nice, like the, um, sort of like the metal is on the edges and the, the main support is the concrete in the center. So something like that could be kind of nice and just lead that all the way around. About a bit more time, I'd probably even recommend, normally what I'd like to do is this. I'll get a foundation. Oh, we don't even have it. So yeah, we don't have anything. I'd use a half foundation just so that the very edges look like they have like vents and stuff in them. And another thing you can do is if you go with a one meter foundation on top and a one meter on the bottom, you can have a different floor than you have a ceiling, right? Because right now we'll have a concrete ceiling with, you know, it's like we can see the walkway down below and you'd almost want to cover that up and you could go like this. And that way you'd never see it, because the top layer would be concrete and the bottom layer would be metal. And that's why I often advocate for two meter foundations, so that you can replace it later on and do a one meter and then a one meter. Why don't you do it at the beginning? For reasons like this, floor holes won't work if you put it on a one meter foundation, because it's only going to go through that one meter. It won't go through the, the one on above it. So always start out your building with two meter foundations, and then you can always like strip them and change them later if you want to change how things look. But I think for this sort of starter power facility, that while we don't have many awesome tickets and things like that, there's not much cosmetics we can actually get. So I think I'll just run around and try to like add some concrete trim to various things and try to clean it up that way. And that could look quite nice, so I'll, I'll just give that a shot. So I thought I would mention as well, so I've gone with this concrete strip all down the middle of our walkway, and then or our corridor, whatever you want to call it. And then we have the regular fix-it on either side of that. And then asphalt to go underneath the 
machines and in between the floor holes and stuff. Asphalt can be quite nice as a factory logistics kind of setting. I don't know why, but it's very clean looking and it's sort of like a just a dedicated area for all the machines to kind of go on. And it's a sort of a breakaway line that lets you know, yeah, you're not supposed to go there. It actually treats patterns really nicely, but unfortunately we don't have any patterns right now, so we can't use those. Um, obviously it's great for roads. <laughs> That's what asphalt's for, but I think it just works well. That's a, kind of a, something I often go back to, and I tend to put underneath the machines themselves to kind of just show you, like, yep, this is the sort of the walkway area for people to kind of walk around, and this is the sort of machine area where machines are supposed to be. There does seem to be some sort of bug in the game where my power generators are going off periodically, and I've noticed that if I just flush the pipe, like, the water, it was full. These were operational, and it was totally fine. Then it just stopped. Not sure why. But if I just flush that segment, just the segment, not the full network, they all power back on again. It's like the pipe gets stalled for some reason. I think it's a bug anyway. Hard to understand what it could be otherwise. Why are you off? Yeah, it's getting its water now. Okay, yeah. Yeah, not sure. Just If you run into that problem, just flush it. I have a feeling it could be to do with the pumps, maybe aren't high enough, maybe? So you could always try replacing those, but I'll keep an eye on it, if I get a solution I'll let you know, other than just flushing it. Alright everybody, just to catch you up on what I've been doing, I've added in a bunch of more generators, although I'm out of rotors so there's just no more I can add, I still can't really do the second half of the entire build. I've added a wall all the way around, so this is going to be the max height here which is seven walls high, just like so. And then if we get a foundation of just one, and we were to, let's just choose this area here, and bring it straight across, it intersects with the chimney stack, just where that chimney stack has a line. So that kind of creates a nice kind of cutoff point. Now, I won't use these, I'll probably use the roof, rather than a foundation, just to kind of give you an idea that the height should roughly match that spot right there. So, in building out, basically, I've made gaps of two, fa uh, two walls across for sort of windows. We don't have any glass or anything right now, but the place would get really dark if I just enclosed it all completely. So gaps of two typically work really nice. So it's a ga you know, you have a, a pillar of one wall and then a gap of two, pillar of one, gap of two. And then to do the bottom really easily, it's just a wall. Press E to get a one meter wall and then just pop it down. So that's as easy as that. For the corridor leading over, it's a little bit more complicated actually, because I feel like we'll be walking below. Uh, so effectively, if we think of it like this, if you imagine, this is what I did at first, I just had a complete wall the entire way. So this is going to be a wall of four, just a little bit smaller than that one. Um, and if you had a wall going all the way out, the rule on this one is just a gap of one all the way. Right, like that, so you just carve it out and we have our windows. But you kind of want like a little window sill. Unfortunately, a, a regular wall is just too big. So, and one wall is okay, but it leads to this other problem, which we'll talk about in a second. So what I want to do actually instead is put one wall down, bring it up to two. I'll just have to do that a couple of times here. There's another way of doing this as well, but just, this is just how I did it the first time anyway. All right, and then we get rid of the bottom bit. And then we can put in a regular four meter wall in underneath. Now, I don't want to get much more complicated than this because without blueprints, this just adds a crazy amount of time for very little gain. <laughs> so we'll also take away that top layer now, the top one meter. So what effect this gives us is we have our little windowsill like we did before, but it actually like goes down to the layer below. So what we could do now is the gaps where there, the wall hasn't continued yet, continue that all the way down. And now if we were to hop down a floor, we have a little window, the kind of top part of the window has a little you know, one meter bit that encroaches over. So that's nice that we have that there. So you could obviously do it in different ways, but that's just how I chose to do it there. And then we can cut away these bottom bits. And now we can just put back in the regular one meter again. Because this is what I would consider the base of the build. There we go. 
yeah, so that's just kind of the idea going around. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm just kind of overall trying to block out some windows. I haven't decided on the windows for the logistics floor yet because I want them to be a little different than on top. And then I'll probably put some sort of paint job on the building, but again, still figuring, figuring that out right now. All right, so I'm just on top of the little corridor here. Now, like I mentioned before, we don't have the corner pieces for roof tiles, but effectively, I've just drawn out a line of two meter incline, uh, just the entire way, all the way down to the wall down there and to the tower that's gonna be here. Now, this tower will probably climb up anyway, but if you're ever wondering how to kind of plug these gaps, effectively, all you need to do is unlock the ramp walls and find the same meter incline that you have with the roof tile. So two meters will be R1. So we just slot that in there, rotate that around, slot that in there. And then for here, a straight wall, just one meter done twice, would plug that gap as well. So that's how you could kind of do it if you needed to. I don't think we really need to actually because, um, oh, actually do we? Yeah, no, I suppose we do because that's the, the roof is going to go on right here as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, I don't have the corner pieces, so we'll have to leave that. But everything else is basically done then for this roof as we lead in here. And again, it'd be nice to have windows or different materials or colors on the walls. We'll get to that. All right, so I'm just beginning to do at the roof. So I'm just using the flat tiled roof. I thought about making it an incline, but this height actually works really well for just being at the level of the chimney stack. So I'm just gonna keep it that way. So just a flat roof all the way across. It's gonna make this place look like a big rectangle again. I can't avoid it. Um, but yeah, just thought it was worth mentioning when you're doing the roof, uh, just make sure you keep the black lines together or away from each other. So every second line, you just have to rotate them. They actually normally do it themselves, but the first time you have to do it manually. So for the first line, and then it seems to just know what you're doing. And it keeps the black lines together, and then it keeps the separators together as well. All right, that took like forever, but the entire thing has a roof on it now. It's a super basic, super flat roof, but it's in position. So I think what I'll probably do now is, because it makes the room quite dark. Nah, I think I'll actually leave it. I was gonna say I'll carve little holes out. But I think once we unlock the glass roof, we'll just change the material of the ones that are in place. It'd be a bit of a hassle to remove them and place them back in. Uh, we do have these big open windows that allow a little bit of light in at least. So in the future, once we unlock the glass roof, we'll create sections of skylights that kind of go across the place that could look quite nice. So yeah. All right, so I'm just at the base of the build at the moment and I'm gonna add some pillars to the bottom. So effectively just using the concrete foundation with four meters, I'm just going in line with all of the sort of branching, well, I guess pillars to use the same word again, in between the windows. Just continue that all the way down to the very bottom on the edge. Now, you might remember when we first built this place, I won't actually be able to swim there and there's radiation behind me. When we first built this place, I had said to people that it's gonna be, this floor is one foundation out further than this one. And that was to allow for pillars to kind of come down. So that's kind of the idea for that. And if we just bring it down like this, then what I'll probably do as well, something like that, is break out the material tool, go with the fix of foundation, and just create a band of metal across the middle. Kind of like that. I just think it breaks it up a little bit. Again, you can decide if you want to do that or not. I feel like if it was an all-concrete build, I would keep it concrete, but because there's bits of metal, I feel like it makes sense to do that. Um, if I had the steel frame, I would definitely use that, but I just, I don't. Uh, so yeah, so just basically going to continue just putting the finishing touches really now on this. There's not much left to go. And I'm leaving that bit exposed. I just think it breaks it up again, makes it look kind of nice. But in future, this will be windows. The windows will make it look pretty cool, I think. So as I was building the pillars at the back, I realized there is a hard drive site here, but I don't have what I need. It needs rubber, four rubber. But there's encased industrial beams. There's some computers. Screws. Is that it? Some reinforced iron plates. Yeah, I'll probably throw the computers into the awesome sink or something. I'm kind of desperate for tickets. That seems to be it. But yeah, I'll mark this. So we'll just mark it as... I usually give it the exclamation mark to let it know that I haven't found it. And then on our map, we know that, okay, that's a hard drive site that we need to get. And the ones that I have gotten already, I put a crate on it instead. So at least that just stays on the map then. All right, well, we continue these pillars. All right, I think I'm pretty much done with the pillars. So, you know, every two gap, we have a pillar that comes down. And then every four foundations down, we painted it metal just to kind of break it up a bit. I've also decided to build a little walkway right out the center as it goes between these two pillars, right underneath the 
actual kind of walkway we have, you know, the corridor walkway. So right under there, it's just another way to kind of come up and in into the place because there is this little ramp that leads up this way. So it might get some use, maybe. Um, I noticed as well that this is just a little short, so maybe we'll just fix that. Yeah. All right, I think that might be it. I think I'm pretty much done <laughs> because... There's not much we can, uh, without windows, there's not much we can do, and without a lot of the different pieces, like the different angles and things, there's not that much we can do creative, uh, creatively, but I don't really mind, you know, because it's kind of our first little starter factory thing. Uh, admittedly, probably bit off a bit more than we could chew in the beginning here, but other than, what's going on there? Oh, this would normally come down, that's why. Oh, that's fine, we could just do one of these jobs. No big deal. A pattern will look a little different, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this would be a separate building. That's why that would actually be a wall that does come down. We'd have the conveyor uh, wall holes for these things, but we don't actually have those unlocked yet, so there's not much we can do there. I'm happy to leave this open air for now. I just built a one wall around the entire thing. We put the concrete following it around as well, similarly to how we've done it before. If we want to go upstairs now, just take our little staircase up this way. This one didn't have its ceiling put on yet, actually, and then and that was temporary. <laughs> and then we're in to our corridor. So our corridor has its roof on, except for the bits that we're missing in the awesome sink. If you have a look out on the side, our logistical floor has this kind of slit wall that goes across it. So a smaller uh, two meter wall, basically, that kind of cuts across just to kind of make it look a bit darker and less welcoming in that area. And then we just have all of our generators with our walkway that leads between them. Still haven't built one there, but that will go in place once I get some more materials. And then I'm just waiting on finishing off and getting a few more generators. We'll walk along this way though and just have a look. So effectively, we just have this giant warehouse full of generators, you know? It's nothing too crazy, but it's nice to have a bit of concrete to break it up. The asphalt is where the generators begin. If we go into our uh, tower we can head downstairs so we get downstairs we're out at the logistical floor things are operating just fine here I think from what I can tell power has stabilized and stayed positive for quite a while but I'll double check on it just to be sure but yeah this is looking good obviously it's just gonna be rows and rows and rows of these things feeding upstairs once we get all the floor holes in all right we'll head downstairs one last time oh I never put the wall on in here God, I'm just eager to get done. I'm running out of materials. I don't want to run back and forth anymore. All right, down at the bottom, then we're out into the foggiest area ever, the actual water extraction site. So we've lifted up pretty much all of the... I just had some materials stored here. Pretty much all the foundations. There might be a few one or two rogue ones hanging around that we can just, just about spot every now and then. But for the most part, the foundations have been cleared. Our pumps are doing their thing. And we have this nice symmetry going on with how we get up and down our various towers. And this will just lead all the way back out around the back with all the pillars hanging out the back as well. I said I was going to maybe paint the place, but I decided I, I don't think I need to. We'll just leave it as the default colors. I was thinking blue and white for blue crater. Uh, kind of a bright sky blue, but especially for the water pipes and stuff, I usually always color them blue. But we'll leave it. I think it would be better to focus on customization when we actually get the tools to do a bit more with it, you know? Um, but the last thing to do, I'd say, is this is just called construction site. We're going to remove that marker now. Put it right smack bang in the middle. I'll we'll just call it the coal power plant. Selecting an icon. Uh, I guess power icon. And then we'll go with the kind of a yellowish color. For power, I guess. Marker size on the map, large. Distance, let's say far pretty far and you can highlight it let's just hit that for now what does highlighting do oh it just puts a little thing around it yeah so quite a big map marker how what's the distance on far pretty far yeah so it just extends just pretty much over to our grassy fields area but anywhere beyond there we wouldn't really see it and that's pro totally fine by me not gonna highlight it we'll just leave it as is it's the coal power plant so there it is on our compass right up ahead of us nice all right finally we did it uh, I mean, gotta be honest, you know, definitely bit off more than I chewed or could chew. I don't think I had it fully planned out as much as I thought I did when starting it. 
But now that it's in place and hooked up, it is going to be easy just to add more power to it all the time. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to getting Mark 3 belts, Mark 2 miners, uh, and especially the Mark 2 pipes, because that's really going to be the big deal breaker when we can actually fully utilize a full pipe of water. Not a deal breaker, it'll just be a game changer if anything. We'll really get the place ramping up massively then. Yeah, it can't actually get up any higher, but the chimney stacks are up there. Can we? Should we build a quick little outpost and just have a very quick look at it? I'll probably give you guys some cinematics of the place actually thinking about it. That could be cool. Although all my mods are broken, so I can't really fly around it. Or I could use the advanced game systems maybe, actually. Yeah, there we go. So little bits not completely done, but mostly done. Mostly done. We're about 80% of the way there. Just a few extra walls and a few of those coal generators that didn't quite get done in time. Let's have a look from the very top. Where it all started today. There it is. Alright, looks awesome. Okay. <laughs> Oh my god. It'll look so much better when we get some windows. And I don't even have concrete walls unlocked. I wanted to make the place out of concrete, but it's out of metal. Uh, which is fine for now, because we make an even amount of iron plates and an even amount of concrete. So using the metal walls actually uses an even amount of both. So that kind of worked out. Uh, but in future, if we get concrete production ramped up, we'll, have, we'll probably just build entire brutalist looking concrete builds. Uh, very last thing to mention. I mean, if people have made it this far, I'm, I'm guessing you're bought in. But if you've made it this far, I just want to let people know that future factories will be better thought out. And they're going to be smaller <laughs> than this one for a while. It'll just be like copper factory, steel factory. We don't have to plan end game factories for that kind of thing. Uh, plan a little bit ahead, but not too far ahead. So it should be a lot more doable. And now that power is just like done, we can kind of forget about it for a long time. And build relatively ambitiously, which I'm looking forward to. So that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I do apologize for any of the mistakes that I've been making along the way. I'm trying to correct it as best as I can. And I've been putting a huge amount of time into the series to try and pl plan these things correctly. So I am trying. <laughs> but I'll, I'll try to get a little bit better. All right. That's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.